Before we go any further, let's take our rig uh, for a test drive just to see how the setup's going so far. The very top of the rig hierarchy, we have our master transform curve. Let's see here it is in the outliner. And this curve is set up so that I can move, scale, or rotate the entire polyp rig as needed to position it in the scene. Above that, in the below that in the hierarchy, we have this control curve, which is our uh, polyp curl control. And this is set up to control our forward kinematics so that we can rotate the curve and cause the polyp to bend and the tentacles to kind of spiral around. And if we move it up, you can see that the tentacles move in, move it down, the tentacles move out. Of course, this tentacle, which is being controlled by inverse kinematics, is ignoring uh, the animation of the joints. If I select my tentacle A control curve here, and I'll set IK blend to zero, now it's going to ignore the inverse kinematics, and I can use the forward kinematics to animate it moving around. And I can also set this to, say, a value of 0.5 so that I get a 50% blend between the inverse kinematics and the forward kinematics. Set IK blend back to 1. Slip this curve back to its original position. The other attribute I've set up is if I select my polyp curl curve here, I can use the close mouth option to open and close the mouth. So that's hooked up to the blend shape control. I'm going to select my control curve here, make sure IK blend is set to one. I'm going to set show joints to zero to hide the joints. It makes it easier to see the control curves. I select a cluster here and I can move it around in the scene to have direct control over the tentacle position. Sometimes it's easier to select these guys here in the outliner. If I select these, say move them around a little bit, I'll select cluster handle two, shift select three, shift select four. Let's go to the beginning of the timeline. I'm going to press shift W, which adds a keyframe to their translation channels. Move to a later point in the timeline and just move these around a little bit in space. I have auto key turned on, so it's automatically adding keyframes when I move these at a different point in time. And then go to another point in time and move these around a little bit more just to create nice windy kind of motion. Now I can scrub back and forth in the timeline. You can see I have a nice animation set up for that tentacle already. So at this point, you could go through the process of replicating this rig for each one of these other tentacles. And at the end, you'd have a very nice uh, rig that allows you to animate the tentacles individually and the polyp as a whole uh, fairly easily. Uh, but the next thing I want to add is kind of the icing on the cake, and that is the dynamic hair that will control the IK spline curve in conjunction with the clusters. So we're going to add that next, but before we do that, let's uh, take a look at how dynamic hairs actually work. Understanding how the hairs work within a Maya context will make it much easier to incorporate it into the rig.